Are you wondering why you suffer a lot as a child of God? Do you know that being a child of God makes you one of the chosen ones, and as a chosen one, you are prone to suffering? You may find it difficult to reconcile with the fact that you are being made to suffer despite having the Almighty as your Father. And that is what this video is all about to explain reasons why you suffer so much. I want you to know that you are not alone in this. Many other chosen ones are going through these experiences as you. But you must understand why these sufferings are happening to you so that you will know how best to respond to them and be victorious, even in them. Make sure you watch this video till the end. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do so now. Click on the subscribe button to receive more inspirational and illuminating videos from this channel. The moment you believe in the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you are chosen because he has called you out of darkness into his light. This sets you apart from the many humans on earth because your identity is now in Christ, not the flesh. The chosen ones are those who have pledged their allegiance to Christ and who have decided to live for God while on earth. They are the people who are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb and who believe in the redeeming power of this sacrifice of redemption. They have been called out of the world and into eternal life in Christ Jesus. As a chosen one, you get to enjoy many goodness and benefits that men cannot enjoy. You have access to spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You enjoy limitless grace and favor. All things work together for your good. You have access to divine help and the ministry of angels. You have the assurance of eternal hope that cannot be traded for gold. You have a superior life over sickness and death. The devil is afraid of you and all that is yours because the seal of God is upon you. You enjoy supernatural provision and protection. All your endeavors are blessed because God is on your side. However, Despite these blessings and goodness you stand to enjoy as a chosen one in God, you are also automatically prone to suffer many things. Yes, even if you don't like to suffer and Christ has borne the ultimate suffering on the cross, declaring, it is finished, suffering cannot be removed from your equation as a believer in God. Your suffering can come under the guise of trials, persecution, tribulations, and so on. However, as Paul admonished, as a chosen, you are not to suffer as a criminal. Your suffering as a chosen one is solely because of your faith in Christ. Now that we've established that, let's unravel seven reasons why you suffer a lot. 1. You profess and preach Jesus. A fundamental reason for your suffering as a chosen is hinged on your profession of faith in Jesus. Many people in the world have still not grasped the truth that Jesus is the one sent by God to save the world from sin and death. Many people are still living in ignorance and take the gospel of Jesus as mere religious propaganda. They still do not understand the man Jesus and the significance of his birth, death, and resurrection. Many people hate to hear his name or doctrine because they don't believe in him or what he has come to do. This is not alien or strange, as it has occurred for over 2,000 years. During the lifetime of Jesus on earth as a man, many people witnessed the miraculous signs and wonders that Jesus wrought day and night. They listened to his wise words and teachings and affirmed that it takes a man who comes from God to be able to do all the things he did, just as Nicodemus professed. But as much as there were people who accepted Jesus, there remained a larger part of people who were Antichrist right from the birth of Christ. Herod was after his life and haunted him so much. His earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, had to leave the town of his birth to Egypt to take safety until they heard of Herod's death. Also, as he grew and started interacting with the people, teaching them about God and the kingdom of God, and healing their sicknesses and diseases, the scribes and the Pharisees loathed him because he seemed to contradict everything they had held on to for years. They could not believe that a little boy born in a manger who had no special beauty or comeliness could be the savior that had been prophesied of mages and whom they were waiting for. 
they antagonized him and made him suffer many pains. They instigated the people against him and made him suffer for a crime he did not commit. They beat him, spat on him, ridiculed him, and crucified him. They cannot understand nor fathom how he can be the savior they have been expecting. If they could do that for your savior, what makes you think you will be exempted? The hatred and venom held in the hearts of men over 2,000 years ago is still being spread around today. Even though Jesus has long died, resurrected, and descended into heaven, many people are still his antagonists, and they have decided to transfer the hatred they have for him to his chosen ones. They have decided to carry their dislike and disgust for Jesus over to you and many other chosen ones who have pledged their faith and their life for Jesus. That is why, at your workplace, in your neighborhood, among your kinsmen, and everywhere you go, you will find people whom you are helping, whom you have been kind to, who are beneficiaries of your goodness, suddenly hate you and gang up against you for no reason. No reason. Oh, there is a reason, the sole reason being your faith in Christ Jesus. It will even become more heated when you preach the gospel of Christ. People who do not measure up to you in age or stature will despise you and lash out hateful words against you. But you should not allow these things to overwhelm you. Remember that Jesus has mentioned before his ascension that you will suffer all these things for his namesake. And you will see that the early apostles were all partakers of these sufferings. They were beaten, locked in prison, lied against, persecuted, and entreated with evil. But they remained standing because they knew whom they believed. They were not discouraged because they were convinced. But it was proof that they were doing what was expected of them as Jesus' chosen ones. Take comfort and courage in this, too because whatever suffering you are going through now can never be compared with the weight of glory you have at Christ's coming. So, be of good cheer. Don't faint or lose heart. 2. You are in this world, but not of this world. Have you not realized that no place gives you as much soothing, comfort, and rest as when you are home? No matter how beautiful and luxurious another man's home is, Something always makes you feel like your stay there is temporary. Inadvertently, you get the cue to return to your home. It is because there is no place like home. That is exactly what your experience is like as a chosen one in this world. Remember that Jesus said to the Jews who were persecuting him that he was not of the world. Every act of evil done to you is a daily reminder that you are not home yet. This world is not your home. You are just here in the meantime to declare the goodness of the Lord and the good news of Jesus to the world so that many people will come into the salvation of Christ and be saved from their sins. These are Jesus' words to the early disciples, and they apply to you because Christ has chosen you out of the world. This world is not your home. You do not belong here. That is why the people of this world hate you and make you suffer. This explains why Jesus' response to the disciples in Acts 1 when they asked him what time the kingdom would be restored to Israel, was focused on how the kingdom of God would reign on earth and not on how the world power would shift from Rome to Israel. Because for everyone chosen by God, their home is in God and not in the world. 3. You are a soldier on the war front. For every day you spend in the world, you are here as God's army fighting against the devil's opposition. Unease, ceaseless fights, suffering, pains, and anguish characterize the life of a soldier. So, suffering is a necessity for you. If you are not suffering as a chosen one, your faith and belief should be questioned. Paul reminded Timothy of this identity in one of his letters. As a chosen one, you will engage in many warfare, both physical and spiritual. You will have to fight wrong ideologies and beliefs spread everywhere. And because of this, people will hate you and fight you. Imagine you saying no to bribery as a political officer because your faith in Christ as a chosen one prohibits you from taking bribes. Your colleagues and boss will naturally hate you and despise you. They can even go as far as framing you just to eliminate you. 
Or you are working in a government peristatal and refuse to conspire with your colleagues to embezzle the fund allocated for a public project. They will hate you and curse at you. You must put up with these things as a soldier of Christ. And you will realize that not many people will want to be your friend or associate with you because their lifestyle contradicts yours. It is okay. Even the Bible says that friendliness with the world is enmity with God. So don't waste your energy trying to please or make people like you. A soldier devotes more of his time to training and preparing for war. That is what you should do as God's army. Remember, Ephesians 6 spells out your instrument of warfare, truth, righteousness, gospel of peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, and ceaseless prayers. You should spend your time and energy on these so that the sufferings of this world will not overwhelm you. 4. You are a threat to the devil. When you are a chosen one in Christ, the devil considers you a threat to him and his cohorts. So, he brings suffering your way as a form of opposition so you can get discouraged and deny God. But hey, you can't fall for the devil's wiles. You have to brace up and hold your head high because when God is for you, even the devil bows. The devil's ploy is to make you suffer so much that you become fearful of him. How you respond to the devil is sobriety and not fear. The devil is your enemy, and you are his enemy. He wants to devour you. That is why he is making you suffer. Remember how he was going to and fro with accusations against John. Remember how he made Job lose all he had and played Job with many sores and sicknesses. All these are his ploys to make Job, God's chosen one, suffer to the point of denying God. But Job did not deny God. The devil is still out there, haunting the saints of God with unpalatable situations and circumstances because he knows that your fervency and faith in God are a threat to his kingdom. He knows that the more you preach the gospel of Christ and get people converted, the more his kingdom is depopulated. So, he fights against you by making you suffer spiritual attacks. He wants to make you weak and discouraged from carrying out your divine assignment. But don't be defaced because God is for you, the devil cannot prevail against you. You might not see him physically, but he has agents everywhere whom he is using to attack you and achieve his destructive aim. He worked through Judas Iscariot and the Jewish council against Jesus. He worked through the Jewish rulers to imprison the apostles in their days. So, he will usually use men around you to make you suffer. That is why you have to be compassionate towards these men whom the devil is using and preach the gospel to them so that many of them will be released from the stronghold of darkness and receive liberty in Christ Jesus. 5. It is necessary for your refining. Sufferings are not desirable to anyone, understandably. You don't desire them. But you must understand that suffering is necessary for your refining. Sometimes, the reason you experience suffering is to help solidify your faith in God and strengthen your resolve for Him. At the end of the day, you will realize that you have grown in spirit and stature through the sufferings you experience. It is not the sufferings that groom you, it is the Holy Spirit who gives you the wisdom to go through the sufferings that have groomed you to thrive in any situation, whether good or bad. Job was a man who had loved God all his life. Even his wealth was not a hindrance to his love for God. So much that God could attest for him before the devil. But when he went through suffering, God was able to teach him some practical things that he might not have known if he never experienced those sufferings. Among other things, Job learned of the sovereignty and righteousness of God in all situations. He became a grown child of God than he was before his suffering. His faith was proven, and his end was better than his beginning. In like manner, we experience suffering because God wants to prune and refine us from some excesses and ideologies that do not align with his sovereign will for us. Have you noticed that suffering makes a man sober and reflective? Even though God does not orchestrate sufferings. Yet, God will often use the same to prune you and refine your faith in him so that you can produce more fruits and become more grounded in your faith. As a chosen one, 
sufferings are not meant to weaken you, but they make you stronger in God. When you go through suffering, your consecration to God becomes more heightened because you will want to understand why you are going through those experiences. And also, you want God to rescue you from such experiences. In these moments, your heart is more receptive to what God is saying because you are paying rapt attention to God. In these seasons, God begins to teach you mysteries that you have been too distracted to learn. He will not just hurriedly answer your prayer by taking away the suffering, but He will also train you on how to wait on Him and how to hear His voice. These processes refine you and help to deepen your understanding of God. Remember that the Bible says all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. So, even your suffering will work for your refining, which is your good. 6. You are a pillar. Another reason you suffer as God's chosen one is that you are a pillar upon which the destiny of many people rests. The sufferings you go who result from the weight you have to bear for these. Jesus suffered and died because many people depended on his suffering to come to salvation. The early disciples suffered persecutions, trials, imprisonment, stoning, killings, and crucifixion just so that the gospel of Jesus could be witnessed to the end of the earth. You will also experience many sufferings because therein lies the rising and freedom of many generations. Joseph had to suffer as a slave in Potiphar's house and later as the chief slave in the king's prison to be able to ascend the throne in Egypt. He was a pillar upon which the weight of his family and nations rested for preservation from the dearth of famine. His suffering was meant to prepare him for the people he would have to save. It wrought in his compassion for people he otherwise might not have had if he had grown up as daddy's boy. Moses suffered as a fugitive in Midian because he was a pillar upon which the destiny of the children of Israel rested to be rescued from bondage in Egypt. He probably would not have been able to confront Pharaoh if he lived all his life enjoying the pleasures and privileges of being a prince in Pharaoh's palace. If you go through the scriptures, you will see many other incidences of people who went through different shades of suffering because they are pillars upon which the destiny of many people rests. Even today, people who are pillars for others cannot avoid suffering. The same goes for you. Many destinies are attached to your rising, so the devil tries to attack you with everything so that many people who depend on you for breakthrough will not experience it. But this is when to remain resolute for God. This suffering will not last, the day is about to break on you. Imagine the suffering Hannah went through before she could conceive Samuel. Israel might have missed the prophet, Samuel, if she had caved. And then given up on her prospect of giving birth. What of Elizabeth? She didn't have a child until her old age, which is like a huge suffering for a woman, childlessness. But thank God for Elizabeth, she raised the foreigner for Jesus Christ. These stories are just to make you see that you suffer a lot as a chosen one not just because of yourself but because of the people who lean on you for rising and survival. 7. Another reason you suffer a lot as God's chosen one is that you are heavily gifted. Gifted with insights and revelations so much that you can gain access into the happenings in the lives of people around you. You are gifted with a compassionate heart that makes you worry about others and take on their distress as yours. You cannot close your eyes against people who are going through pain and difficulties, you always want to help them, to make them feel better and restored, and as a result, you share in their hurts and bruises. And the more people that you have to relate with closely, the more your pain deepens. Whichever form it takes, suffering is unavoidable for you. The earlier you reconcile with this truth, the better, so that, like Job, you will not curse God in your sufferings no matter how hard the devil tries to instigate people to push you to do so. That is why, now that you have known why you suffer a lot as the chosen ones, you need to know how to keep yourself fortified so that you will stay victorious in your sufferings. How can you fortify yourself during your suffering so that it will not overwhelm you? You have every tendency to get anxious when you are suffering 
but how best to fortify yourself is to devote yourself to prayer of thanksgiving. Some people give thanks only when God has done a miracle for them or when everything is going smoothly. But as God's chosen, cultivate the habit of always giving thanks to God, even in your suffering. When you do that, you are telling God that He is the one for you both in the good and bad times. It shows that you trust Him to take care of you even in your suffering. When you practice this consistently, your heart will be full of peace. Another way to fortify yourself during suffering, as God's chosen, is to pray for God's strength and grace through the suffering. The Lord Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane when the weight of the cross looked too much for him to bear, and God sent angels to strengthen him. You will eventually reach a point when you no longer have the strength to continue. You should ask God for strength so that the devil will not overpower you. When you are going through suffering, the devil will try to cloud your mind with all sorts of things that will discourage and make you doubt your faith. That is why you must be intentional about meditating on things that are lovely and pure. And this is made possible when the Word of God dwells in you richly. So, as God's chosen one, in your moments of suffering, Bible study and meditation help your mind focus on God's love and grace. This will help to sustain you. But you can rest assured that your suffering will not last forever. It will soon come to an end. Keep holding on to God, ye chosen one. He will not disappoint you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you because you chose me in you before the creation of the world. Your love for me has made you offer your Son, Jesus Christ, to be sacrificed on the cross. He went through many sufferings so that I could receive the gift of salvation and become your child. I don't know what kind of life I would have been living if Jesus had not died and resurrected for me. But I am grateful that I am in you now, as your chosen one. Thank you for the word that you have brought my way today so that I can no way suffer a lot. I understand now that my suffering does not mean. You don't love me. I now know that it is a privilege for me to be a partaker of the suffering of Christ. It helps me to better understand the depth of Christ's sacrifice and appreciate what he has done for me even more. Thank you, dear Lord, for opening my eyes to this truth. Lord. There's a limit to how far my strength can go. I ask for your strength to graciously go through these sufferings. Grant me the boldness to continually profess my faith in you despite the opposition rising against me. Grant me utterance to preach the gospel in season and out of season so that many more people can enjoy the grace of salvation you have come to offer through your suffering on the cross. Like the apostles of old, Help me to go all lengths to propagate your gospel even if I have to suffer for it. You have made me realize that as a chosen one, I am like a soldier on the battlefield who must endure all suffering and persecution. I pray, dear Lord, that I will not get distracted by the affairs of this world. Help me to stay focused on my assignment as your soldier. Equip me with all that I need to successfully this life's battle succor word says that I am more than a conqueror through your love for me. Grant me grace that I conquer the devil in all his attacks against me, both physically and spiritually. Once again, Lord, I ask you will help me to trust in you till the end. Just as Jesus was faithful to you to the point of death, help me to be faithful to you till my last breath. I pray for my other brethren who are suffering because of their faith in you that you give them strength and grace to scale through their suffering. Help them to keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith, so that their testimony in Christ will remain steadfast and not shaken. I thank you because you hear me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If this video has blessed you, subscribe, like, and share. God bless you.